take up a whole lot of your time, but I will answer any questions that you have. That's a lot of why I'm here. My name is Explain Erica Adams. You are. Uh, my name is Erica Adams. I'm with the Tennessee Student Assistance Corporation. We're the state agency that manages all of our education lottery funds uh, in terms of Tennessee Promise, the Hope Scholarship, all of those types of things that we give to our students to help offset the cost of their college education. I had brochures. Uh, hopefully you all picked up one of these on your way in. If anybody didn't, I lined the first two rows, but hmm, I know, right? Who needs one of these? Okay, let me get a bunch of them. So most of the lottery scholarships and all of the state scholarships um, work very much the same for homeschool students as they do public school students. There's a couple of criteria that is a little bit different. <clears throat> but I want to just kind of cover the basics of what TSAC does and what funding is available for your student. Uh, we work with, the outreach team works with students across the state, families across the state, to make sure that you know what funding is out there and how to access that funding and how to keep that funding once your student starts college. We also work the state and provide FAFSA assistance. So it is now FAFSA season, October 1st, the free application for federal student aid opens. And so it's a scurry to try to get those applications done. Um, and we work across the state with school counselors, with homeschool groups to make sure that you're getting assistance or having the opportunity to have your questions answered about how to complete the FAFSA, what information goes in it, what do they mean when they're talking about whatever they're talking about. What are my assets? What do I include? What do I, what can I not include? All of those FAFSA type questions. Um, just as an overview, on the inside of that brochure, you are going to see a list of every single scholarship that's available to students from the state of Tennessee. So you'll probably have to take it home and get out your magnifying glass because it's very fine print. But the basics that you're already familiar with probably are Tennessee Promise. It's our tuition-free option for students who want to do up to an associate's degree. State of Tennessee will cover the cost of that associate's degree when a student attends either the community college or the Tennessee Colleges of Applied Technology. We have several four-year schools who are also eligible to receive Tennessee Promise, but the formatting, the funding works a little differently. Um, so you can ask me about that or, or we can talk about that if that applies to, to folks. The other one that most people are familiar with is the HOPE Scholarship. And when public school students get either a 3.0 or a 21 on their ACT, they have earned that HOPE Scholarship. It's $3,000 at the community college, it's $3,500 at our four-year schools, as long as students are attending a school in state. All of the state funding can only be used in the state of Tennessee. You cannot take that, even though you earned it, through your academics, you cannot take those across state lines and get those awards to use at an out-of-state out of school. So for homeschool students, um, and it really depends on the umbrella structure of your homeschool and how it's listed within the Tennessee um, database, whether um, it's an individual homeschool or you're going through an affiliate that's a, and there's type one, type two, type three, all kinds of different stuff. But homeschool students, are eligible for the HOPE Scholarship based on their ACT, not on their GPA. So your student would need to make that 21 on the ACT in order to be eligible for the HOPE Scholarship. Um, and the, the underlying there is, is that homes, home, some homeschool students are receive their GPA from their parent or a smaller homeschool umbrella, and so the GPA is not a measurement that can be used for state scholarships. I don't know, uh, it depends on, like I said, it depends on the umbrella that you're under um, or and how that school, how that umbrella is registered with the state as to whether you can use ACT only or ACT or GPA, either one. Students who uh, have a 29 on the ACT are eligible for GAMS. It's an extra $1,000. So there's a lot of state money out there 
For any of you who are thinking that Tennessee Promise is an option for your student, how many of you have high school students or are moving into that high school area so that this is kind of pertinent information? Okay. So for, for students who may want to use Tennessee Promise, there is a checklist in your brochure that gives you all of the details about how to use Tennessee Promise. One of the things that is probably the trickiest piece of Tennessee Promise and homeschooling is the fact that um, although every county has a partnering organization, Blount County's partnering organization for Tennessee Promise is Tennessee Achieves, but there is not a structured format to reach out to homeschool students. So the homeschool group or the parent is going to need to reach out to a school or Tennessee Achieves or to me. You're more than welcome to reach out to me. My phone number and all my contact information is listed on the back of that brochure. Um, you can see me in the East Tennessee section. I cover all of East Tennessee. But there's not a structure in place that says, okay, here you're going to receive this material. We have you registered as a homeschool student, so we're sending your material to your homeschool umbrella or to your home or wherever that entity is, and you're assigned this particular public school to go for your Tennessee Achieves meeting, for your Tennessee Promise meeting. So that has really fallen to the responsibility of the homeschool organization themselves to find out that information. Go on to the Tennessee Achieves website, download a copy of that handbook, and be able to read where is your closest, that's what I was just thinking too, uh, where is your closest place? So for some of you, it might be Maryville High School, it might be Heritage High School, William Blunt High School. So you can attend any of those schools and that will count as your Tennessee Achieves mandatory meeting. But you're not gonna have the push or the entity that is saying, okay, it's time to do this, we need to do this, you need to go to your meeting. And that's something that happens very profoundly in the public school system. Uh, students are really push, push, push to, to do these things. Um, and the meeting is established, it's announced, there's a lot of reach out, there's a high touch for students to make sure that they're completing all of these benchmarks. And unfortunately, you all don't get that same service. So um, if you have questions about Promise, please consider me your school counselor and just call me. Well, don't call me, email me because I am doing this kind of thing all the time and I don't answer my phone very often. So I'm worse than any teenager you would know. But feel free to reach out to me and send me an email and I can send, I can share some of these links with you. I can share information with you. I can answer your questions as you're going through this process and you might be trying to figure out, well, why I, I'm transitioning to college. My student's transitioning to college. I know that she earned the Hope Scholarship, but it's not showing up on our financial aid award. Call me, email me. I can look up your student's state record and help you figure out what's happening if something's not going just right. Yes? How do we, as a homeschool co-op, if that information I'm sure members, is there a database that they can find or do they need to contact you? They would need to contact me because it is a state-restricted database. Um, but but let's, say, let's say that you've got a student who's doing dual enrollment and you, you want to make sure that everything's in place and everything, the money is, is what, or maybe you haven't been charged yet and you're thinking, wait a sec, I, I, have we not, have we lost our funding? Or why haven't we been charged the balance for this class? I've got access to a lot of those records and so you can email me, uh, text me at any time and I can get back with you. We can set up a phone conference and make sure that all of the pieces are in place if you're having any kind of problems or you're running into any barriers as far as making sure that things are lining up and that funding is coming through for your student. And the same with the FAFSA application. When you get to that point and you need to complete a FAFSA application, if you're running into any problems, I have some online resources. Plus, I can, I'll just sit and do a FAFSA over the phone with you if you need some help completing that FAFSA. Yes. Um, this is just a general comment about the website. Yeah, about which one? Uh, the Tennessee, the, the Tennessee website. Okay. Um, this is something that we have found in our homeschool group. People don't know about the, um, the GAMP, what is it? The GAMP, General, General, General Assembly Merit Scholarship. Scholarship. It's really, really hard to find and understand on your website. So we 
like we pass that information on. Uh -huh. But we have people, like TN, it's really hard to to figure that out when you T TN gov backslash it's college like page. Really yeah. So they had, and I hate to say this, but I haven't visited my own website for a while. So, so I hope it's still there, but I know that one time we had a link that was specifically for homeschool students. So I'm hoping maybe that's still there. But another thing with GAMS, it, you can run into problems as homeschoolers because it requires both an ACT and a GPA. And so for that reason, a lot of times, depending on the structure, Right. So, Andrew, will you scroll down? We'll see if we still have that. So that's G A N S. General Assembly Merit Scholarship. It used to be right in here. Yeah, it used to be. We found it. But okay. Really scroll down really for me. Because it was down here. towards the bottom. Oh, yeah. Go do a search. Okay. Yeah, yeah there used to be a specific link. Google and type yeah. General Assembly Merit Scholarship Tennessee. Yeah. Because I can never find anything. It's in that brochure. So yeah, it's in the brochure. People don't have this right, yeah. right. So, well, how do we get the brochure to people? How can VHA distributed to them? How how can I how can I get you? Yes, yeah, because I deliver it to them. Uh huh. And if they don't know what they're looking, they don't know what they don't know. Yeah, yeah. So is, is there a way that I can come and speak to parents and students of your homeschool group and provide this information more one-on-one? -on -one? There is. We could do a round table. Yeah, we like we, we uh -huh. But then we, we go to get brochures when you got to that point, too. Absolutely. I can give you brochures to mine. Like everybody is qualified. Yeah. Yeah. We just have people that offer it so they can come and speak with you and yeah. they have to shop themselves. That's yeah. It. It's like one time we all get together. Corporate okay. Corporate shop down like at a school, for example. Okay. But I would like to get these yeah. over here because it's very helpful. I have a child in college uh -huh. this year, but this wonderful little chart here, I let someone look on that like way into the process. Ah. You know, and so if I had done a lot of, I just, I research a lot. Right. And if I had done a lot of research and digging on the website, right. I wouldn't know everything either. Lots so, it, well, and it's hard, it's, it's hard for us to reach the homeschool population because we're not in connection with you right. either. So it's kind of, um, it, it's kind of we there's some blocks there's some roadblocks there that we need to try to try to take down and figure out what is the best way for us across the state to connect with homeschool groups I mean, is there a list of homeschool groups is there i'm just going to recommend that you you um contact the umbrellas right and the umbrellas, I mean, like I work for uh, Home Life Academy right. here with Maribel Christian. Right. We are always sending stuff. And, so, and I've worked events. with Home Life Academy further east. Right. Through Tusculum College. Yes. Yes. How would I, I would, would I connect with somebody in the, on the administrative end of Home Life yes. Academy and say, hey, how many brochures? Right. How many? Um, we did, well, and we, we just had a meeting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we just handed these out last yeah. year. Yeah, well, the there's at one of our groups at one of our round tables. Okay, there is also a way that you can go onto the TSAC website uh -huh. and order brochures. And anytime that you you do that, that funnels down to your local regional representative because if you say I'm Home Life Academy in Greene County, that's going to be me, and I'm going to connect with you in Greene County, or if you're Home Life Academy here, you know. So wherever, and we'll make sure that you get those brochures. And that is one of the, I mean, that's one of our best ways to let people know what these scholarships are and how to get them and how to keep them. To order brochures under, if, at the very top, if you go under resources, there you go. Uh, there's a forms. See, they recently changed the website. Yeah. Yeah. They do that like every three months, right? So I will let me get let me get one of your all's contact information, and I will make sure and get information out to you and send you some links. My my information is on the back of the brochure. Yeah, right here. This is right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. That's even easier. That's even easier. Yeah. Because.
Cynthia has been communicating with you and um, she's not a she feels. So she's with Mom Wad. I do need to give you some brochures because I haven't been able to reach anybody. Because Cynthia is okay. Is it is she your school counselor? She is my director of the homeschool and okay. Okay. What? Okay. <laughs> Yeah. No, that's that's what we love about you. Yeah. So there used to be a form, a order of brochures. That'd be good. Let's try that. So other other questions. I don't want to take up a bunch of time. I will. I promise. I will get brochures out to all of you. I've got them here with me. So please, you know, let me give them to you now. Yes. So brochures are awesome. But is it? But can you work with somebody to fix the website? I can forward your suggestion. That's that's really how it actually works. Right. I will forward your suggestion. But was when you had the homeschool link, was that helpful to have that homeschool link that was right there on that front page? See, we thought it was so great that we were putting it out there. You know, that there, here's this link that specifically said for I, homeschool students. I will say that when I went through this um, in 2010 uh -huh. with my oldest, it was very easy to find that. Well, of course. But and we got to make it more complicated every time we change it, right? I looked at it very recently for somebody else. I think we were, we were trying to provide this information. Yeah. I couldn't find it. I mean, I did eventually. Yeah. I, w I, will def I will definitely pass that along. Um, like, a, you know, that's all I can do is pass it along. Actually, our department, thankfully, communications is in charge. The, our executive director is in charge of the website. So at least I have a direct lead in to the person who does the website. So that might help. And she's very responsive. So if she knows that somebody's having trouble finding things, She's going to take steps to, to fix that. Of course, there's an approval process, right. you can imagine. Um, yeah, really? Yeah. Um, but anything, please, it, as there's things that you're struggling to find, if you will shoot me an email and I will just forward it on. Say, hey, you know, website, website, website. And because that's the last thing we want is that people get frustrated looking for things that they can't find. <laughs> what was that? No, it's a, it's a, we'll just send a lot of emails. Send me a lot of emails. Yeah, this is a really long discussion on our, in, our, yeah. in our homeschooling group. No, see, that's, that's wonderful. Those are things that, that we need to know. Yeah. Um, and, and that's part of my job is to be an advocate for you, right? Um, and especially in an area where um, you might have somebody volunteering to be a school counselor, uh, or you might have somebody who's filling that role. But, you know, please, I, I am more than happy to, to fill that role for you, do what I can for you uh, as a, on an individual basis. But yes, making sure that that website is something that you can navigate and you can find what you need, that's critical. That's critical. So send me your notes from that meeting. If you it wasn't have a meeting, it was like a, a bunch of posts on a Facebook question kind of thing. Can you can you screenshot it and send it to me or anything like that? It's hard to find it. Yeah. Or if, or if you could just recap some of that conversation. Yeah. And the other yeah. drop them off here every year at the library, right? Mm -hmm. We we try to keep them here in the libraries uh, across the county. Now a lot of times the libraries end up with our leftovers at the end of the previous year. But thankfully this year, not really anything has changed as far as the funding structure. So the only thing that changed on the brochures were the pictures. So you're not missing anything uh, if you have one of last year's brochures. Um, so this is, this is great. This is great information. This is probably better than anything I could present to you all or give to you all. Um, but does anybody have other questions about, about funding, about FAFSA, about anything like that? Okay. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Nikki then, and I will look for your email, okay? And I'll shoot you out an email, and I'm going to leave brochures um, just on the back table because I have to pack up and move on to another event. But I will leave a bundle of brochures for each of you.
And that way, is 60 each enough, or you need more than 60? I probably don't need 60. Okay. I think 30 would be enough. To okay. They come in bundles of 60. So let's go ahead and give you this. Well, this will be good because, you, I mean, what you don't give to seniors and parents, go ahead and give to juniors and sophomores because this has information on our dual enrollment. This has information on how to get that uh, the grades where you need them to be. So there's lots of good stuff in there. So feel, feel free. Give them to everybody and anybody that you just keep them with you when you go to the grocery store, pass them out in the office. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The sooner, I mean really, the, the way we look at it, the sooner that students have the information on the requirements to get state funding, the sooner they're going to work towards those goals. And so yeah, we want seventh and eighth graders to have that information. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. You are very welcome. You. We will go ahead and move to the panel part, but I do want to make one suggestion about the office. Something that worked really well for me, I was in the public library as a librarian and also a homeschool mom. I volunteered to be a mentor, and when you volunteer to be a mentor, you can select which high school you'd like to work with or if you'd like to work with homeschoolers. So that is a great way to get that information is for one of you to volunteer to be a Tennessee Promise mentor. You can select homeschoolers as your group and then you have direct access to all of that information. You can help them through their process and you can also help them uh, find their service opportunities and that kind of thing. So I volunteered in Bradley County to be a Tennessee Promise mentor. It didn't take a great deal of time. It's just kind of texting them, calling them, to remind them of their deadlines and make sure that they're doing their service. So very easy, quick, painless, not a lot of time investment, but the information that I got out of it and the connections were super valuable. So somebody volunteered to be a mentor. Um, we'll go ahead and move to the panel first. Do you have questions, Kathleen? Well, I just wanted to um, make sure that you make sure that you all know before you leave, just to take a look at some of the examples that we have with some of the reference books. These online resources are phenomenal and I love them, but we also still we still have uh, um, print resources, and these these are just some examples of them. So um, make sure that you remember that too. Okay. I'm so cold. I'm so cold. I'm so cold. I'm so cold. I'm so for them, both from library staff as what you could do for homeschoolers, and as homeschooling parents, what you would like to know wisdom from these people who've done it. Do you all have any questions? I okay. We would like to start off with I'll one. be the, I'll bring the microphone. Okay. How about that? Hi. I thought you had to this panel, first of all. Um, what I would like to know as a reference librarian is what do you need from the library? How can we best help you? Okay. Is it, are we good? No. Are we good? Oh, could you really? hear me? Shout. <laughs> could you hear me without that? What I would like to know is how can we as a library best help you? What are your needs and what should we be doing? Uh, a lot of the things that the library offers are already very helpful. Um, some things that would be really great, like on my list of things I'd like, would be um, maybe classes and how to do research in the library for various age groups. 
where the kids could come in maybe you know once a semester or once a quarter and have training in how to use the library and and what the resources that they need for what they're doing are um, so that would be one thing that would be super nice um, okay I would like to say that um, we do tours we don't get a whole lot of requests for them but that is something that we have in the last that, that we have done and we will continue to, to do that. And that's, I know in the component that, that we did not too long ago, that we did try to include that. But if you contact us, we will be happy to, um, to, uh, to arrange that. Something that just now, not in the public library, it's a different setting. You know, we had the co-op literature classes come and did like a field trip. We had a computer room for them and did tele training and talked about their topics and how to use the catalog to search for stuff, how to request holds, how to do their library loan. So more of that kind of like, focused time. That's exactly what I was so, going to say. What, yes. okay, sorry, what, what you just said, exactly what you said, is something that as a literature teacher, I requested like probably, this might have been five years ago. And it, I, it just never happened. Like I was in contact with somebody in the library and back and forth, back and forth. And ultimately th that person dropped the ball and it just never happened. So I always regretted that because I think it would have been an awesome preparation for my students going to college to have that. So I hope that you, I, I'm not teaching anymore, um, but I hope that is something that some of our co-op teachers <laughs> <laughs> will, um, you know, that, that you would offer. So actually I didn't, Hear what you said, Nikki. Oh, yeah. Um, so I was saying, I was at the public library before I came to the regional library. We had a really good partnership with the BCHG, the Bradley County of Educators, and um, they would bring their literature students in mm -hmm. to do research. So we booked the time in the computer lab. We have like two or three hours. They could come, learn about tell, go over their topics, how to use the catalog how to do interlibrary loan, because that's something that comes up. I know often you look for a book and you hit the wall and you think, okay, well, the library doesn't have it, so you write that off as a possibility, but interlibrary loan, we think about it intuitively as librarians, like, of course, well, we'll just interlibrary loan, but people don't people know, know about that. that. No one thinks about that. So we talked about that process, about um, all of that stuff that Andrea showed in Tell, but also some digital literacy and some informational literacy, why we need to use the kinds of sources that we're using. And so it was a really good day. And also to make the library um, feel like a welcoming place, you know, so we did it not super dry and not like, hopefully, hopefully they weren't terribly bored. Um, and then they came in for their literature papers and we also had the younger students who were middle school who were writing points of view, like persuasive, essays come and that became yes, a thing exactly and so we talked about like the points of view and context database and resources and context for them um, yeah so to just have everybody come and it wasn't always like okay everybody can come at this time so we were flexible it meant some evenings for me or some mornings or different times but it was worthwhile to get them into the library and feeling like hey this is the place I can use I'm empowered and I know what I'm doing anyway yeah. That was what I was going to say is that our students, our children don't have a school library, so they're really more library education. And the tales, like this has been wonderful for me because I had no idea all this was even available. And I, you know, we're, we've all worked on the board of directors at BHEA, so it's one of these things where we need to know these things as well for our students. So things like this, opportunities where we can come together and speak to you guys, phenomenal. And the other thing I was telling her earlier, which has nothing to do with uh, materials, but meeting spaces, I don't, it's hard to, you know, it's, you have a system, it's for the whole community, so you can't just get special things, but I would love to have small areas of meeting spaces that had ceilings on them. Yes. <laughs> no, <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> we, we have tried so hard to have little meetings here because we need public spaces where we can meet quiet spaces um, that are small gatherings. My son came for end of the year economics presentation, and they just had a smaller group, quiet kids, not rowdy. They were all high school age, and they're just trying to run their little PowerPoints, and they were too loud through the ceilings. You know, even for a small gathering like a couple of tables. So 
So this is a, that's an issue, I think, with meeting spaces here is that they're so public still that I understand why, but still it makes it impossible. So we'd love to have some more places carved out to use for meeting spaces. That'd be great, which probably you have no control over, but I thought I'd put that on there. Yeah, any, anything, even the basement, we'll take a spot. <laughs> Got a question back there? Yeah. Mine? Do you want to talk about? Okay. <laughs> Mine's, uh, I'm not on the panel, but I'm geared towards what you asked our library uh, could use is, and this is something I came to this meeting thinking about, I have middle school and elementary children that I homeschool, so we are at the library at least twice a week. I mean, we come here, thank you, we come here constantly for our resources. Um, we've lived in a lot of places and we always get in touch with our library. Our library is like our second home. Uh, one thing that we loved in other locations uh, was a museum pass or a field trip pass. The Chicago Public Library has this, and now I know that's Chicago. There's tons of museums, There's, but we do live near a uh, tourist. We have Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, and we're blessed that they offer wonderful discounts to homeschoolers during certain limited periods of the year. However, the Chicago Museum Passport or Field Trip Passport worked out that the library organized these places that homeschoolers would like to visit as field trips. BHA offers amazing field trip discount opportunities. Uh, but if we don't want to go to BHA or it doesn't line up, and I don't mean it that way, but if our plans don't line up, it would be neat to have a resource where we could go to the library and they say, hey, for um, the Biltmore, which is extremely expensive, but a historical, wonderful place to visit. Um, we have organized that, you know, you can come get a pass from us. You check it out, it's like a hotspot situation. We're taking the, uh, the fee and the money for it, but you can only, you know, you, we only have somebody to give out. And there may be a hold, but you get to go to the Biltmore as an educational resource for free. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm not saying that's practical, I don't know if it works out, but that's an amazing opportunity for homeschoolers who want to say, we love our field trips, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> our field trips. So, uh, the other thing, and I've only got two, I'm getting me, but I don't know if there is an educator um, program sort of thing for the library. I know that we have two weeks. I tend to check out 45 books at a time. Two weeks gives us, we usually do get through it but um, sometimes we don't and i don't mind paying the fees because like i said we come here twice a week but do you have an educators for teachers or homeschoolers where maybe we get extended checkout time periods maybe we get a little more grace on our fees considering i could probably put it in my budget for an annual for how much i pay to the library <laughs> um, that would be a great resource to have an educator program and um, and the last one would be, you actually have a really large homeschool. I guess say, I think Knox County Public Library or something like that. Okay. And you can check out 40 as it Yes, yeah. I, believe me, I'm the person that comes up with three bags and I'm counting my 15 books that I can get on each card for each of my children. Mm -hmm. um, the homeschool selection here is amazing. I know you, I, mean, I know it so well, I know where you moved it from to like, Six months ago, you moved to the front of the children's library. It's perfect. It's right there. I can access it. I can still watch my kids play in the other area. But um, if there were more curriculum choices, I know you have like Life of Bread, math books, and there's some other things. Um, unfortunately, you can't check out a Life of Bread math book and get through it in two weeks. So that's kind of where that falls through. Um, you can at least figure out. You can yeah, think, yeah, and that's, as I say, one, it's a great, I can check out a curriculum and see if it's something I want to buy myself. Um, if I'm not blessed to have that opportunity and people that may need to actually use the curriculum from the library, uh, maybe they get an extended period to try and work through it. Or at least it gives them more time to raise money to buy the curriculum for themselves. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> So one other thing that I was uh, talking to the children's librarian about not too long ago that didn't ever, um, I don't know, it, I haven't heard back about it yet. So it could still be in the works, but 
I would really like for there to be a junior volunteer program again. You have to be 16 to volunteer now, and when my kids, when these two were younger, you could be 13 and volunteer. And I mean, this one still loves to alphabetize. When I need something <laughs> alphabetized, I'm just like, Sarah? Because she's so much better at it than I am from all the shelving she did. She <laughs> so we would, I would love it if it was possible, even if you say parents have to be in the library somewhere while their kids are volunteering, that's fine. I'll bring a book, I'll sit in the corner, my kids can shelf. Or I can shelf while they shelf. I'm not sure why they changed that. But I will look into it. Thank you. Um, something that we that there used to be in the library that Karen used to maintain is um, a portfolio in the or just yeah a portfolio of information in the children's section that was just about homeschooling. So when people um, were new in town or they were interested in homeschooling, they would find this and um, it was just full of information about local resources and so so that was something that the HEA did with Karen as our volunteer and it's one of those things that we just can't maintain because we're a volunteer organization and you know people change year to year and things get they get dropped. I mean they you know, it's like, hey, does anybody want to do this? And nobody does, and then we forget about it for 10 years, or it's probably, I mean, it's probably been at least 10 years since that, probably longer than that since we last had it one of those. sounds like she should start doing it. But it was an awesome <laughs> resource. So the thing is, is that, like, I know that would have to be some kind of collaboration between BHEA and the public library. Um, like, I, I just, I don't know how that would work, but it's been something for years and years and years that on the board we've said like, hey, is there still information at the library? Because people come to the library for information, so it would be awesome to have that here. Yes, Sarah? Brennan. Hi, Brennan. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Back when I was homeschooling, I was actually the volunteer who maintained that before I work here. Uh, talk to us in reference about maybe maintaining that, because we do keep vertical files. Okay. And maybe that would be a better place than children's because they have so much programming and every stuff, all that kind of stuff going on. That we're, and we're more just an information place. So do you think people would go back there? Because I wouldn't have thought of that as a young mom. I would have gone to the children's section. Exactly. And I would have, I would have gone to the to the shelves yeah. where the where there was material, homeschooling material. I think it was a it was a vertical file back when I was doing it. Yeah. Was eons ago. Uh huh. But um, we we can talk. Okay. Reference maintain it and update it and still house it in children's? Maybe? Yeah. Or all the children's librarians could just be told. If anybody asks mm -hmm. you about homeschooling, tell them the person you want to pick up there right now. Yeah. Something that we found um, that we had developed a parent resource collection, so we took all of those, like the shows and all the books. as a parent resource collection That's great. and over time people started donating like oh we finished this curriculum set do you guys want it sure and housing it in the children's library made it get a lot more use yeah. and then mm -hmm. designating it as this is the section for your stuff people knew where to go and they would look there so I I think especially when you are a young mom and you may have more than one kid with you and you may be balancing a lot <laughs> The children's library feels like your safe space because you don't want to take your kids up to the sanctum of where you know people are doing serious work. So maybe, yeah, I know I've been on all sides, a librarian and a mom. So we just, yeah. To speak to your about donating curriculum, we can be happy to help with that. I mean, we get extra curriculum donated to our library. The HEA has a library we maintain at our church where we meet currently. And uh, we get lots of extra donations for curriculum. We try to keep one, if we get one, for the people to research and look at as a reference for us. But we can also donate extra to the library if we knew you would accept it or what the process is for that. Um, but just whatever to make it easier for people to find things would be great because I do agree with the children's area being the place to have it. I remember being a new mom and going to children's. More would be playing around, looking at books, and having a good time over there. And I would just be perusing the racks there because it's just really hard when you have a young one to go back to the more adult sections. I mean, for years I never went to adult for a book for myself. I mean, I was always with him in the children's area, 
fill the basket with books for him. So that's where I had to do my research. That's just a lot easier to have access accessible there. When did they quit having it? Was it just with the teacher helps, or where was it? It, it, it was with the teacher helps. I don't know. And it was a fold. It was not a vertical file. It was just it was a folder. folder. A folder yeah. that had like a fine in it. Mm -hmm. Turn paper folder. I'm, it's it's been a really long time. Yeah, it has been a long time. But at like least there's, there's been so many staffing changes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was there when I started because my experience was the same way. It's like I didn't know people who homeschooled, but I knew the library. You know, and I was here with my son, and I, I found that resource here, and that yeah, and that because I was in the kids section, yeah. and I wouldn't I wouldn't have been in any other section. Yeah, yeah. Totally. and especially if we have a homeschool resource section, for that to be there and just be like local homeschool resources on the side of the thing, people will see it and be like, oh, that might be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. tried to reserve one, I've gotten it not when I needed it, but at a different time. 
And so if I, if you could reserve it and say, I need it this time, then somebody else could have it for a while and then you could get it and use it during like the time that you're traveling. You need an audiobook so you can like listen to it on your way to Philadelphia. Oh, I wish there was a way. You can suspend your hold temporarily. Um, so like 45 days. The only way to kind of play the reads game, I know, I know, it's so hard because we share it with all the Tennesseans, all the Tennesseans, uh, is to suspend your hold so you can put it on hold and then as you see, okay, I'm getting close but I don't need it yet, I'm number two, you suspend that hold and you kind of stay in the queue and then you can reinstate your hold. That is unfortunately the only way. And I will say we do see a recommendation. Um, we we get them across the state at the regional library. They are reads purchasers. I need to purchase Christian fiction, so I see all your requests. <laughs> we send the Christian fiction requests. No promises. Uh, they have to appease all the Tennesseans. Um, but we do try to be responsive to requests. And you may have seen that Lucky Day. You've seen Lucky Day as a feature on Overdraft. So that's a new thing. Really popular titles have gone into the Lucky Day collection. And if you look at it, you've seen Lucky Day, you're like, oh, I found it. It's my, then it's your lucky day. So it may be something that's really popular and there um, certain copies are designated to be available with your holds. So if you look at that collection, you can find something possibly right away, but it may not to the thing you've been waiting in your number 45 in line for. So you can also be real sneaky and if you disconnect internet access, download it. <laughs> Don't connect into the internet. It'll stay on your device until, <laughs> until it's time. So, yeah, for example, uh, if you download a Kindle book and then you turn your Wi-Fi off on your Kindle, and lo, the day that it's time to go back rolls around, as long as you don't reconnect to Wi-Fi, Reads doesn't know that it's time for it to go back. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> <laughs> People waiting well, on well, they still get it. It, it goes back, but your digital just, rights to yeah, it, but it just doesn't not know that it's yours. Oh. You're not on the internet. It's a sleeper day. Okay. Yeah. It gets returned, and the next person gets it, but your device doesn't know. Um, okay. <laughs> not to be stinky to the other people who are waiting. No. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't mess up yeah. you. It doesn't mess up the other people who are waiting. Okay. It's it just... <laughs> But as soon as you go back to Wi-Fi, it takes it all away. So as soon as you reconnect, it's all gone. But <laughs> talk to the secret librarian knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> share it with you. Okay. Do y'all have anything else that you want to share or any more questions? <coughs> I can talk into it. Um, do you have any more questions or anything else you'd like to share with the library staff? Questions for Andrea? Sage advice for us young homeschoolers out there. Mine's in fourth grade. I've, I've got a long way to go, y'all. We're going to make it. Oh, and see, I want to go back.
grow out of it, then it's awkward to bring your five and six year olds to it. Um, and they're too old for it. But um, you have an amazing STEAM program. Uh, you have all these wonderful things you do in the kids' library. I know there's the staffing and financing, so all these things we ask are just you know suggestions about things we expect. But it would be neat if there was a homeschool, not group. I don't want to say maybe just the for this week we chose to learn about Indians for 30 minutes on a Monday at one o'clock <laughs> when public school is still in session. <laughs> and it's a homeschool that you know come and you know but this month. Then, cause we have co -op. Yeah, one in it. Choose your name. But just a, just a, not a unit thing, just something. It's something, an external resource, especially during the winter, during the rainy, it's something to get us out. Homeschool story hours. Um, yeah, we do have chess. You do have chess? Yes. I tried that. I'm the game not, night is not great. Happening. They play put together. The I love night. that game. <laughs> um, but then again, like during the day, during for homeschool kids to come to get out, um, but make it just a, a non-dedicated. I don't know if that's even a thought. An open thing, just to come learn about something and break your brain up. Kind of like kid. the the steam or <coughs> Fridays. Yeah. But like a homeschool version of that kind of thing. But, yeah. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. My kids would like that. My, well, I let me ask you a question that may be too personal. Is there a problem with doing it at the time when the other kids are there? Uh, for like story time? Yeah, story time or steam. Oh. No, because I could put one kid in story time and like oh, yeah. the other one could go do the okay. other activity. That would be nice. So, okay. Because mine will do it, but it's like he's eight and it's just, you know, it's. Yeah. He's sweet, but it's getting a little, okay. little young. And it's not like we necessarily feel like it needs to be exclusively for homeschool. Yeah. It's just that it's convenient for us That's to the middle of the day like. because it's a nice time when it's nice to break up your your day with a little bit of social time. Okay. Yeah, exactly. More of a, just an opportunity for these kids to come together, maybe learn something not crazy in depth, but just to get together and to have a moment. And I know we have co-op for that wonderful opportunity, which is why I'm <laughs> I'm not saying uh, just once a month, once a week, just 30 minutes. But we were off for co -op for like five months. Yeah. So, I mean, that was a long time, so. <laughs> so I thought there were a couple other things that you each wanted to have or that I would like to have. Sorry. No, this is so good though. Okay, so you used to have Spanish story hour and that was for like all elementary ages and I loved that. And we took, we brought our kids and it was great. And it was really, really educational. And my daughter is now a Spanish minor at college. Oh, wow. Not this daughter. <laughs> Don't ask her to do Spanish. Um, <laughs> and then a couple of other things. Um, I would love it if the library just had a list of all the Caldecott books that are in the children's library that people could just pick up, or that read was even on the website that you could print up as a PDF on the website, and you could just check off the ones you've read. Anything like that, ask at the reference desk. We've got crazy lists. I mean, just crazy. But see, if it was just like, there should be a link on the website. Lists, children's lists, things like that. Because like, do you have a list of all the Newbery books and all the Cal Cal I'm sure we books? do. Oh, yeah, that, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. And another thing would be like science by topic and by age. Like third grade science about mammals, third grade science about reptiles, third grade science about weather, third grade science, and then you could have like a list of the books that are right for your kid's age on those topics. And you could say, okay, I'm gonna just do science from the library. That sounds amazing. I'm not super- I made a list like that myself when I'm, my kids were in elementary school, but it's old now. So I, like, I wanna give it to people, but I know that some of the books are probably not even in the collection anymore. I'm not super familiar with Atrium, but I'm wondering if in your catalog, maybe there is a way um, that these things can be searched. Um, I know with Verso, we could say, okay, we're looking for weather, and you could shelf browse, so you could go along the shelf physically in the Lisa, catalog. Is, is that, that something? You go into Atrium? That's something Atrium visual? would do? Are you familiar um, enough with that? Oh, well, I mean, I know you can specify just juvenile nonfiction. I don't think you can break it down by. But when you age. go to visual, to that visual tab, is that? 
No, I just am doing a basic search, it's and over on the left hand side, you can specify that you want just you know, right. non fiction. But that's not But you don't think it goes down to that detail. You can do it by, wasn't the study though, and you can go in and choose weather, and you'll get all the books. You can choose the But to break it down by the study rate here, just for us. I'm just going to this way. We're in Atkins, so there are nine regional offices across the state. So I think that's it. Okay. Yeah, I think so. This is good. Just let me say the one thing. I got what you said earlier about offering something for other ages, or you said multi-age, but I was in the library all the time when my children were small. We used it continuously. We came to story hour, we came to craft time, we came to all kinds of things in the, the children's area. And as soon as they became middle school and high schoolers, we came so much less, which should not have been the case, but it is. There was no, we, we came to family programming, there was programming the symphony or the play, we came to all those types of things. But I wish there were some programming, there probably, maybe there is, I don't know, but more programming available for middle school into high school, specific programming that could be in tandem with the children's hour. Like I said, it doesn't, just so the kids can come. I know it's hard because there's, maybe hard to get kids to be participatory in it because of all the extracurricular activities and all the time they spend in school already. Maybe that's the reason it's not been looked into more. But I would hope that if it was offered, that the home school community would help help you all find the numbers of people to come to actually make it worth your while. And it would help get the students in the library, keep them in the library, keep them, you know, looking at physical books and then learning about the TELL program, that kind of thing to do a lot of the more. Like uh, it's super fun if you do a manga book club and then learn Japanese. Like yes. there's a lot of all those kind of things <laughs> for all uh, the students. Yeah. 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 Uh, Did you mention the classics hour or yeah. something that would tie into their what they're doing, uh, literary? Just it'd be really a great opportunity. So I think that's where it kind of falls off as you as they get older, and so that's why my usage fell off, I do believe, and also because of the time we bring we come in so excited, we just get a gluttony of books, and then we wouldn't use them all in time, and I'd always be late, and I got so frustrated myself for always being late and having to pay fines that I just <laughs> kind of quit and started buying things on Amazon or find them other ways, and so I could keep it a long time. And then I became a, a book horde, so that's one reason I'm on coffee. But really, the library would be, you know, so yeah. much more utilized if, if I kept my children interested and engaged. Yes. Yeah. That's my other thing. I can Do you it. all subscribe to the library calendar? Do you get the calendar in your email? Mm -hmm. yep. You do? Do you? I don't right now, no. So I need to do that, right? You need to do, do that. that. <laughs> there may be more going on than you know. And that's what's the, the Spanish story hour. I believe that lady was a volunteer, and a lot of what happens here is not all staff. So if you see something you would like to do, <laughs> she was feel free to talk to us about it. She worked here. Yeah. She she worked she here. here. I remember you. Yeah. Did she work here? Who was Regina. that? Well, I can't remember her name. She worked with Regina. 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 Yeah. Regina. Yeah. 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 Was that she before your time? It was a lot. Oh, was it before I came? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Yeah, but it, she wasn't here. It was a long time ago. She wasn't here that long. Yeah, so. We had another volunteer that did, um, was it Japanese, maybe? I don't yes. remember that. We had a volunteer that did Japanese, Japanese one. Volunteer. Well, that brings me to a thought process on that. Actually, you know, if you have a great idea, so that you're willing to open up the library to host, but you don't have enough staff to make it happen, we would not have enough volunteers either, but you could communicate that to us and we could try to see if there's someone that might be willing to volunteer in the capacity. You know, we're most a lot of us are right now overstretched as far as what we can do, our personal selves, and we can find people. So it could be a collaborative effort between the library and you know the homeschool community if we knew you were willing to offer something and would give us the space and the time to do it. Something like that, I'm sure we could work out a space in that, you know, and publicize it. Well, anyway, I'm I would be sure that we could work with that. Just keep the conversation I mean, going. All, all the things we're talking about, I'm thinking more stuff, more stuff. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know so when you're we're, talking, you we're also oh, stretched. Yes. They so have, um, They have an organization full of people, and all of those people are experts at something. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how um, that I looked at it when we, somebody would say, we should have a knitting club at the library. I can't knit. You can knit. Mm -hmm. And so you find that we do have person who can do yeah. that mm -hmm. and who's yeah. passionate about it and excited and wants to share it. I think um, we kind of talked about this on the library side with the summer reading thing that was science because everybody was nervous and they're like, I don't know this. I'm not a scientist. 
And that's okay, you don't have to be a scientist. You don't have to be a knitter. You don't have to be the person who knows everything about the thing. You just have to give the place and kind of the space to facilitate it. So talk to them and That's the biggest thing, talk. you know. We just need to know so we could do that and we could help, we could work together. Yeah. And if there's something like a Spanish story hour, Sarah was saying, she was a Bonner Scholar at Maryville College, yeah. and they have people that are Spanish majors at Maryville College in the Bonner program, and they have to do volunteer hours yeah. to keep their Bonner scholarships. scholarships. Help us out. So like, if you have like a list of possible times for them to do, or things for them to provide, like right. a, um, they could like, do a sign language story hour or a French story hour. Or, I, I, I mean, I came, <laughs> I came yeah. as a volunteer here, and mostly I shop books at the Bonner. But um, if I had had a list of like, here's some possible things that I could teach kids, that would have been really cool as a resource for me as a volunteer to be like, oh, this is, a ne this is something that the public wants. How can I provide this class as a volunteer through, through the college program that I'm doing anyway? Okay, you know, that sounds great, but I don't mean this to be negative, but so often volunteers and students are not consistent mm -hmm. and if we advertise and promote this and then our facilitators doesn't show up or after a month they say well, I've done it it's it makes us look bad and it doesn't help you right so yeah. I mean I'm just saying yeah. that can happen and it has happened mm -hmm. <laughs> that's very true I think there would be an adult contact tonight with Maple College to work with the water program make sure they get there I don't know I mean there has to be some sort of there's a lot of volunteer yeah. volunteer yeah. 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 Yeah
as homeschoolers, I wish the library could do this thing, and you don't know if it's feasible or not, and you also feel like a weirdo just going, I'm, I'm looking for books about Rome, and also, let's talk about your late fees. You know, you don't, <laughs> you don't want to start that discussion, but I do think it's important if you have, and I don't know what the structure is here, if you have something for educators, for teachers, that you offer them a longer checkout period, extend that to homeschoolers. I wrote if that you um, have something like, do you allow people to volunteer or wait fines? That was something that we did that was incredibly beneficial. Um, <laughs> yeah, so imagine if you have so had one family, they had seven children, right? So those kids knocked out the fines like in one hour, all of them together. Um, but it's beneficial for both. So things like that, that could make a difference in how relationships happen because you may have somebody who really loved the library and they use the library and then one thing happens and the thought is, oh, I'm never using that library again. I don't care if I have to buy every book from now on until eternity, I'm not going back. <laughs> and so you know, we want to stop it before it gets there, right? Thing, I talked about a library that had a program where you could read away your funds if you were a kid. I am for that. I'm for eliminating, I'll tell you a secret. Okay, this is my top secret. I'm for abolishing fines altogether in libraries. Yes, I know. But I'm not about that. I think so. I'm just, I'm just, Unfortunately, according to our book, Yes. Yes. Theoretically, I think that would be great. I, I personally do. But according to our budget that's actually one of our yes. income streams it, it so was an income stream i hate for it. i hate to say that you know it i was really an do stream for the as a humane person as someone who reads yeah. you know what i that's not the way i wish it were so at this point i know they're not going to be getting rid of the fines on the it's happening in our region though it is happening we have quite a few little libraries which are surprising Polk County, if you're familiar with Polk County, it's very rural county, economically depressed. They're abolishing fines um, because they see it as an access barrier for their community, mm -hmm. and it is. So, yeah, that just happened. I was so excited to be a part of that. They're one of my little libraries, <laughs> and Tokyo Plains Public Library, also another really rural, economically depressed community. <laughs> Chicago Public just went fine free. Yeah, and, and so like, it can like all yeah, kinds all of scales, but we're not. Wow. We're going to want to take down the man with fines, but <laughs> no, we have we hold no power, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Can we just say, Kathleen, thank you for bringing thank us all together. Thank you. Yay. Actually,